concludes the live broadcast with Pastor Morris Johnson of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly. See you next week as we will be live at 9 p.m. to 12 midnight and on Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. God bless. Looking for a safe and relaxed professional massage therapist and nutritionist? Look no further. Latest touch with Empress Judy and Associates offers a natural approach to better health. Treat yourself to a professional massage therapy and nutrition advice in a safe and relaxed atmosphere. Rejuvenate your body, mind, and soul at Latest Touch Therapy. For an appointment, please call or WhatsApp 1 868 398 8282. Or visit our Facebook page. Remember, your health is our responsibility at Nature's Touch. Hi, what's up TNT? This is Wayne Johnson out of Brooklyn, New York. I always wanted to do something back home. And we're going to be doing our gospel segment on Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. Listen what I want you to do. Spread the word. Spread the word, TNT. Salvation full and free. Salvation. It's for everybody. Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. National Congress of Incorporated Spiritual Baptist Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. Liberation 2021 continues to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the repeal of the Draconian Prohibition Ordinance of 1970, which is fulfilling our spiritual liberation. We carry out liberation observances on the Iowa stage at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, the 28th of April, 2021, with a spiritual metaphysics in under the service initiative of Lord Bishop Bonhoeffer. Together with His Eminence, Patriarch Dr. Stephen F. Julian. His Grace as Bishop Patrick Brown. And King Shepherd Ray M. S. Prophet. See you there. Jesus loves. 
residential customers. Now is the time. Whether you're looking for unlimited internet to stream video content, video chat, or shop online, or you want an HD lineup to watch your favorite shows, we've got you covered. All at an affordable price. All you have to do is sign up for our internet or cable TV packages, pay nine months in full, and get three additional months absolutely free. And that's not all. You can win a further three months of free service plus a hamper weekly. So if you're a residential customer, now is the time. Enjoy our internet and cable TV packages all at an affordable price. Call 224G Dot for more details. Green Dot, improving and simplifying lives. Promotion approved by the NLCB. Get mom in the right frame of mind this Mother's Day and see mom smile. Value Optical has a momtastic Mother's Day sale with 40% off all tagged frames and 25% off all other frames. Visit any of our 13 locations and find frames for the entire family. Promotion ends May 9th and conditions apply. Value Optical, caring for your eyes. Hey guys, it's Aisha Wells here. Listen up. If you're considering selling or renting your house in Trinidad and Tobago, then call Keelan George with O'Neill's Real Estate Group. He's a good friend of mine and he's been in the business for over six years. First, selling real estate in Atlanta, Georgia, and now right here in Trinidad and Tobago. He has a strategic online marketing presence that actually attracts thousands of home buyers and renters. Plus, with his home selling advice and techniques, he's getting homes sold really fast. Kilan will actually guarantee you sell your home or, get this, you can cancel the listing agreement and pay nothing at any time. That's right, you heard me, nothing at any time. Selling your home doesn't have to be stressful, people. Check out www.oneilrealestatet.com. O'Neill is spelled O-N-E-I-L or just call Kilon direct at 363-4030. That's 363-4030. Blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus. My name is Nikki Garcia, and you are invited to listen to the final hour broadcast every Monday from 12 midnight to 5 in the morning on The Street 919 FM Radio. Hear Pastor Helen Garcia and my husband, Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr., preach the Word of God. We can be contacted at 629-0113 or 623-8444. Our church is situated at 26 Prince Street in Port of Spain. Sunday services start at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday school and 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Tune in and prepare to be blessed. As my life I lit on the altar As my life When you Text on the street 919 FM, you can win weekly fabulous prizes. Text to win. Using your B Mobile or Digicel handset, text your name to 9191, which allows you to win. One winner will be selected every Friday at 5 p.m. Listen, text, and win. You can also view live streams on Facebook at the Street 919 FM and YouTube at the Street 919 FM. Text to win on the street 919 FM. Turn your lights down low and listen to the Master's Radio. The Church of the Firstborn Assembly Miracle Center of number 399 Eastern Main Road, Waiko, in San Grande, is pleased to present Pastors Morris and Agnes Johnson and guests on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Sundays, Ministry of Worship, Children's Hour, and the Word. Tuesdays, see Jesus in every book of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. Wednesdays, we deal with with current affairs from a biblical perspective. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell everyone. For further information, visit with us at www.churchofthefirstbornassembly.org. Facebook, email us at church668hope at gmail.com or call us at 753-1113 or 236-7271. Your free will gifts and offerings will be greatly appreciated. Account number 795-222 at the First Citizens Bank. 
Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. about statistics the majority of the Caribbean countries have lost more than 50% of the labor force in tertiary education and more than 30% in the secondary education 9 to 12 years in school what's left I got some statistics today you have to tell me if it's true I'm going to ask you the doctors in Trinidad and Tobago are going to ask the politicians here, and you can tell me. <laughs> Have you been to the hospital? How many black doctors are taking care of you? Listen to the people. I'm just asking questions. Listen, lawyers, 87% of the lawyers in Trinidad and Tobago are Indian. And if they don't like you too good, they ain't fighting for no justice for you. But wait, 65% of the judges Indian. Lord have mercy. 98% of those in prison are African Trinidadians. 88% of those in the crazy house. Black people. How many of you eat chicken? They tell me 100% of the chickens are produced by Indians. Now, I don't know. I just got these statistics today. So you have to correct this if it need correcting. But listen, if it's three quarters truth, that's bad, bad, bad. The first Indians came to Trinidad in what? 1845. How long had you been here before they come? Long time, eh? They didn't come on the, in the holes of ships, robbed of their name, their language, their culture, their religion, their God, their history. They came with their culture intact, their name, their language, their religion, their God, and a history. Today, they can unite, pool their resources, and buy up the land. They tell me half of Trinidad is owned by a Syrian Jew. I don't know the truth. I just got here a few days ago. Did you know if all your learned ones leave, they're your doctors. They're gone to England and the United States. The lawyers that should be standing up for you, they're gone. England and the United States. Huh? You don't have judges, enough judges to listen to our cases and handle them with justice. Oh, look at this. How much corruption has been in the black governments that have been ruling you for 57 years? I'm asking questions. I want answers. How in the hell can our people be in this condition if corruption was not the mainstay in black government? win no damn friends. Right, right, right. If you're not a friend of the poor, I ain't no damn friend of yours. 
some of you boast that you are Christians. I beg to differ with you. Jesus would disown this bunch of mess that's walking around doing all this evil in his holy and righteous name. I beg your pardon. Just because you got a cross hanging around your neck, that don't make you no Christian. And just because you can say Alhamdulillah, that don't make you no Muslim either. See, the houses of religion are filled with hypocrisy. And the governments, they all know how to come at you when they want your vote. They all know how to talk sweet to you to get your vote. But after they get in power, how many of you can visit their office and sit down and have a civil conversation with them? Why should we vote for a black man that's an Indian at heart? now and I want us to look in the mirror at ourselves Indians don't apologize to you for being who and what they are why in the hell should you apologize for being a black man who are the original owners of Trinidad and Tobago I'm just very passionate in my love of black people and the pain that I feel for black suffering. How did the Syrian Jew own half the country? I'm just raising a question. The deal was set. How you turn your back on land and let somebody buy it up? Did they threaten you? But they own the land. I saw a beautiful documentary yesterday morning on Barbados. Few white people owning huge tracts of land. What are they building? Three golf courses, a polo ground, and big beautiful mansion that none of us could live in, except maybe to wash the floor, change the beds, and act like the slave that our great grandfather was. How do you think your ancestors are thinking with what they went through to give us what we got? And here in 2012, you in worse condition than your great grandfather was when he was a slave. How could they come to us and offer us money to sell out our people? Listen to me good. See, you can sit and throw a stone from where you are. But Leah, we put you in the same position and see if you got the strength standing up that you got sitting down. So you don't know, listen to me good. You don't know what kind of man or woman you are until Satan brings you up and tries you. You want me to talk about the scripture to you now? You know how great Jesus is? Absolutely. But that didn't stop him from being tried. Didn't Satan take him up on the mountains? Come Jesus, come. Let me show you something. That's what they do to our politicians. That's what they do when you look like you're headed somewhere. They call you, come, come, come. Jesus. Your father promised you something, right? You say you're going to get a kingdom, right? But it ain't here. Look, look out all those cities. They belong to me, you know. But Jesus, if you bow down to me, I will give you these cities to rule. Now, for some, that's an offer they can't refuse. But Jesus said, what did he say? Get thee behind me, Satan. Let me tell you something in politics, in government, whatever job you got, if money means more to you than your personal integrity as a black human being, 
Then they point about statistics. Greetings, listeners. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God. Welcome to the Black Agenda here on the Street 919 FM. I am Brother David Muhammad, and I'm going to be in studio with you up to 6 o'clock this evening. It's less than 20 minutes before the time to break the fast for Ramadan. I greet you in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak to all of those who are fasting for the holy month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. And we are just a few days into the second set of 10 days. So, beloved family. Quite a bit happening, and we want to look around the world today. In a short while from now, I'm going to open up the telephone lines and take your calls on 3420081 and 4665391. You can also send text messages and WhatsApp messages directly to me on 3320214. And as you know, next weekend, or we could say this weekend coming up, I launch my new book, Black Youth at Risk from Juvenile Delinquency to Criminal Gang Activity from 2 p.m. Saturday coming at the Kwame Toure Center in the conference room. The books are $300 which is really a great deal in exchange for what you're receiving. But on Wednesday, inshallah, Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock, I will be hosting a press conference. The first press conference that I would have hosted since 2012, when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was in Trinidad. So 11 o'clock... Wednesday morning. Of course, that's not open to the public, but I will be streaming it on my Facebook page. And, as I said, I have an announcement to make about a new phase of the mission. A new phase of the work that we will be doing. So Wednesday morning, 11 o'clock, you can go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Black Agenda Project, and you'll get to the live stream. So I'll do that Wednesday morning instead of doing the live on Wednesday night, which I have been doing for the last few weeks. Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock. So this Wednesday coming, it will be from 11 o'clock in the morning. And then when I come back here on Saturday we can have a discussion. So, I wanted to, this afternoon, on the Black Agenda, address an issue that might have more of an impact and maybe even more of a backlash internationally than we may think. Of course, the Olympics were due to be held in Tokyo, Japan, last year, 2020. And they have been postponed, of course, by just about one year. So the official Tokyo, Japan 2020 Olympics are taking place, the Summer Olympics, this year in 2021. But an announcement has been made that there is going to be, or there has already been declared, a ban on athletes making statements through protest or demonstration 
the term that they're using is no political statements. But it seems to be clear that the concern is over the global impact of Black Lives Matter. Because over the last 12 months or so, since the killing of George Floyd, and in particular with the continuation of many of those kinds of slayings of black men by white police officers, even during the George Floyd trial of Derek Chauvin, there were about three or four cases of black people being killed by white police officers. Innocent black people who were unarmed, not in the possession of any weapon, no apparent threat. So the Olympic Committee decided to come out with this, I guess, as early as they can to get it out of the way. And the ban preventing athletes from protesting or demonstrating at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, it's still being called the 2020 Olympics, of course, it's this year, 2021, has been upheld by the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. And in a statement released on Wednesday, April 21st, the Olympic Committee said it had come to the decision to continue with the Rule 50 ban. That is how it is categorized, the Rule 50 ban. After a 10-month consultation, consultation process with over, according to them, 3,500 athletes who represent 185 different National Olympic Committees and all 41 Olympic sports. Now, the Olympic Committee is saying... That according to their survey, they said a clear majority of athletes said it is not appropriate to demonstrate or express their views on the field of play. 70% of the respondents, they said, at official ceremonies or on the podium, 67% of respondents said. Now... Remember as well, this is of course a highly subjective question to answer too, because you might think that, well, on the surface, if you want to make a statement about something, call a press conference or put on a blog or put up a post on social media, whatever the case may be, but you should not use these platforms. But you see, the thing is, such an opinion is likely to change if you yourself are the victim or family to the victims or even kin to the victims. Your opinion would change if you now see yourself in the picture under the same category or classification of those who are the victims you're more likely to identify with and empathize with such a protest or demonstration or statement being made if you yourself are vulnerable to being on the bad end of racial discrimination or oppression or exploitation or prejudice. So if it is persons of your race or ethnicity who are the ones being killed persistently by police officers in America, then chances are you will be more likely to have a response favoring the protests as opposed to opposing the protests. But we're going along with here what the Olympic Committee have said. They said the goal of this wide outreach was to engage with athletes and hear their thoughts on existing and new opportunities to express their views at the Olympic Games as well as outside Games time. Christy Coventry, chair of the International Olympic Committee's Athletes Commission said, we want to amplify the voices of athletes and find more ways to support the values of the Olympic Games and what sport stands for. This consultation was a very important process for us and is part of the ongoing dialogue with the athlete community.
We are delighted that the Olympic Committee's Executive Board fully supported our proposals. The study was carried out by a professional research agency and the International Olympic Committee used the Swiss Center of Expertise in the Social Sciences, an organization with extensive experience in high quality academic surveys to ensure all independent views of the whole process of the quantitative survey. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics are scheduled to begin on July 23rd. Now, that's 2021. Rule 50. This famous Rule 50 or controversial Rule 50 states that no kind of demonstration or political, religious, or racial propaganda is permitted in any Olympic sites venues or other areas that is rule 50 let me read it again it says no kind of demonstration or political religious or racial propaganda is permitted in any olympic sites venues or other areas the rule strives to ensure that the focus at the Olympic Games remains on athletes' performances, sport, unity, and universality, according to the International Olympic Committee. Now, sanctions for athletes who violate Rule 50 will be handed, handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, in spite of that, though, in March 2021, the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee announced that American athletes would be permitted to hold up a fist, to kneel, as in the taking of the knee, as Colin Kaepernick did in the NFL, refusing as a black man to stand up for the American national anthem when in his perspective the America society was guilty of persecution of black men through its execution of black men arbitrarily and extrajudicially so he decided to take a knee when the national anthem was playing and then another brother decided to take a knee and then more brothers decided to take a knee and then even some of the white people decided to take a knee in solidarity with the black people. And then all across America in just about every single sport, while the American National Anthem was playing, black men, black athletes, black sports icons, and some of the whites too, took a knee in protest against the oppression of black people in America. And even though then-President Donald Trump called them sons of bitches, yep, that's presidential language for you, not in private, that wasn't any hot mic hidden recording, no, he said that at a rally. So in spite of the direct condemnation of the then U.S. president, and in him even calling for some kind of action to be taken against the athletes who were standing up for justice. They continued. And as you know, it spread. But anyway, the U.S. Olympic Committee, they said American athletes are allowed to hold up a fist, kneel, and wear garments promoting racial and social justice while taking part in all future American Olympic and Paralympic trial events. But the key events have upheld this ban, which has caused widespread concern. Now, memories take us back to 1968, where 
there was one of the most famous photographs ever taken. We're on the podium. The first and second place medalists in the 200 meter race Tommy Smith and John Carlos had their hands in the air pumping the black power fist at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico and that became one of if not the most iconic moment in all the history of sport outside of a result or a score or an actual performance of a game that single event with Tommy Smith and John Carlos Tommy Smith won the gold medal John Carlos won the bronze medal I'll tell you about the Australian who won the silver medal in a while but it was October the 16th 1968 when these American sprinters Smith and Carlos came first and third in the 200 meter race and this iconic moment took place on the podium for the medal ceremony where they were wearing human rights badges and black socks without shoes they lowered their heads and each defiantly raised a black power fist with a black glove on their fist in solidarity with the black freedom movement in the United States. Let's look at 1968 just for a moment and see what was happening. Dr. Martin Luther King was murdered, assassinated in 1968, just a few months before this. Malcolm X was murdered three years before that. Muhammad Ali, as a black man with a slave name, Cassius Clay, was renamed, given the name Muhammad Ali by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then Muhammad Ali announced to the world that he is now a Muslim, a member of the Nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and that he will no longer be known as Cassius Clay but he's taken on the name Muhammad Ali that was given to him by his teacher and mentor but Muhammad Ali refused to fight in the white man's war against Vietnam and he said the Vietnamese people never called me a nigger but here in America, my black people are called niggers every day. And just like the great Jesse Owens in the 1936 Olympics in Germany, in Berlin, where that great black man, Jesse Owens, he was like the Usain Bolt of his day. And there he was, four gold medals, won in Berlin, Germany, under Hitler and let me tell you as well that one of the biggest lies ever told, not the biggest lie, because you still have Columbus and, other, and that um, white people were the Egyptians who built the prison, others, not that. One of the biggest lies ever told was that Hitler refused to shake Jesse Owens' hand at the 1936 Olympics. Truth be told, actually, if you do your research on it, and also from Jesse Owens' autobiography himself, Hitler was a huge fan of Jesse Owens. 
Hitler had an admiration for Jesse Owens, according to the biography. Yes, Hitler wanted his country to win and all of that. But they were marveled. All of Germany was marveled by Jesse Owens. But the thing that Jesse Owens highlighted in his biography was, here they are, going over to Germany to take part in the Olympics as Team America. But when they left America, him as a black man couldn't stay in the same hotel room as white people. Couldn't eat in the same restaurant as the other American white people. Couldn't drink from the same water fountain as the other American white people. And if you think that's a shocker, after this black man won four gold medals for the United States of America, when they came back and had a special dinner ceremony for the athletes, Jesse Owens, as a black man, could not even walk through the front door of the hotel. He had to pass through the kitchen because black people weren't allowed in there. I know I'm not talking about apartheid South Africa. I'm talking about America, the United States of America. And Jesse Owens said, imagine Hitler in charge of Germany. And he, as a black man, could go all the way over to Germany and be treated as an equal with his other American athletes. But when he came back to America, the inequality resumed. So 1968 was this time of tension. You also have the Watts riots. You have the Detroit race riots in 1967, the Watts riots in 1965. There was mass tension. Huey P. Newton was arrested as head of the Black Panthers. Our own brother Kwame Touré became the honorary prime minister of the Black Panthers. Fred Hampton was murdered in cold blood by the Chicago police. All around this time, when those two athletes, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, put that black power fist in the air, And all of that pain, all of that tension, all of that hurt pent up in them. They raised the black power fist. Now, the Olympic Committee deemed it to be a domestic political statement unfit for the apolitical international forum that the Olympic Games were intended to host. And in response to their actions, the president of the Olympic Committee ordered Tommy Smith and Carlos suspended from the United States Olympic team and banned from the Olympic Village. And when the United States Olympic Committee refused, the International Committee threatened to ban the entire United States team, the track team. And this threat led to the expulsion of Carlos and Smith from the Games. But those two <laughs> are the two that history has remembered. Now, let's talk about the third individual who is on the podium. Uh, let me finish this up quick and get to the phone line because I'm dealing with this tonight on my television program on Gael at 8 o'clock and you'll see all the images because there's a lot. There's a lot on this of not just 1968, but there was a similar protest in 1972 when the Olympics went back to Germany. But that one has been known as the forgotten protest. Again, two black men on the podium refusing to acknowledge the American national anthem. But the third individual who came second, Peter Norman, Australian. 
he also wore the human rights badge. But believe it or not, the two black power gloves that Smith and Carlos were wearing actually belonged to him. He was fascinated with the commitment of these two black men to the struggle for the upliftment of their people and for the cry for justice. That he, if you look at the picture, you will notice that one of the athletes, Smith, has the glove on his right hand and the other athlete, Carlos, has the glove on his left hand. So Carlos has his left hand up, but Smith has his right hand up. And a lot of people don't notice it when they say it at a flash. Because naturally you'll put your right hand up. But it was a right hand and a left hand, which are the two sides of the glove that belonged to Peter Norman. The white Australian sprinter who empathized with the cause. And it was his suggestion that Smith and Carlos wear this glove. But his actions resulted in him being ostracized by the Australian media and reprimanded by his country's Olympic authorities. He was not invited to be part of the Olympic Committee, even though he won the silver medal in the 200 meters race. They did not allow him to participate in the 1972 Olympics, despite several times making the qualifying time, being the fastest runner in Australia, the best athlete in Australia, but he was sidelined simply because he supported the cause of these two black brothers. And when Australia finally hosted the Olympics in the year 2000, he had no part in the opening ceremony and it was in 2006, after he died of a heart attack, that they began to appreciate and acknowledge him for the contribution that he made. Couldn't even get work in Australia with the athletes, even though he was the best that they had. And his two black brothers, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, were pallbearers at his funeral. Now, in 1972, when Vincent Matthews and Wayne Collett won medals in the 400 meters race, when they stood out on the podium and the national anthem was playing for the United States of America, they stood casually, hands on their hips, playing with their medal, looking around, they refused to stand at attention. And that one with Vincent Matthews and Wayne Collett is known as the forgotten protest. Because why they refused to stand at attention for the American National Anthem, the German crowd booed. And in an interview, after the medal ceremony with the American Broadcasting Company, Collett said that the national anthem meant nothing to him. That as a black man, the United States anthem meant nothing. And he explained that he had felt unable to honor the anthem because of the struggle faced by African Americans at the time. He said, I, could, I couldn't stand there and sing those words because I don't believe they are true. I wish they were. I believe we have the potential to be a beautiful country, but I don't think we do. And both of them were banned from future Olympic competition by the International Olympic Committee. So I say all of that, and there's so much more to say on this, but now, in 2021, the Olympic Committee wants to uphold Rule 50, banning athletes from making statements of consciousness in support of the struggle 
and in the stands for justice. Uh, let's open up the telephone lines. 3420081. And four six six five three nine one. And remember, you can send text messages and WhatsApp messages directly to me on three three two zero two one four. Caller. Assalamualaikum. Tanaisirin Hakim Mohammed. Waalaikum salam. Good information. Nice information this afternoon here, man. Yes, sir. Yes. I remember, all the, I remember all those things that went on there at that time, brother David. Mm. You know, wherever was struggle or concern, and the struggle is tough, you know. Of course, I want to divert too much from this because it is good. But David, you know, I was watching um, Africans in Asia. Yeah. And they show you something. They told you that um, Africans will get hung for stealing a chicken. Mm hmm. During that period, a slavery. Yeah. And I was, just, I was listening to a program by her name is Anderson Hillary. Hillary Anderson, something for a BBC program. Where she went to Mississippi and Louisiana. And in Louisiana, in Mississippi, a man, a black man, but it's not easy, it's one, not one, but there's many of them all over the place. It's in a solitary confinement. For 45 years, for, because he robbed some place, but they, they, they sentenced him to hang, to death. But 45 years in solitary confinement, but David. Mm. So when I when I hear that hear that is they are this morning, and I go back, you understand, to what they said in the Africans in Asia, they predict these things, and it's no difference. They show us that all these things took place, you understand. So it means that you. As a, as a black man, you understand? Here, you know, there were plantations in Louisiana, they call Amot, Angola, I think. It has the same slave name. And it's the prisoners they have working on that plantation there in Louisiana. You know? But anyway, it's, it's here, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. That's why I say that the, who celebrating now because the, the one or two celebrating who don't understand because of the Joy Floyd um, 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 con and, um, conviction. To the police officer, they don't understand what is going on. We are no way yet, brother David. You think that the, that, that that this committee, the, you know, there's a day that the Jews they, 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 um, they celebrate, not celebrate, but they, they stand up for the um, I mean, it's silent for the um, for the Holocaust. You think that our committee could tell the Jews and them, you understand, if they participated at that time, that mm -hmm. they can't stand up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think, you think that? They'll find themselves but, on the wrong side of the law for even suggesting it. I tell you, you understand? So it means that you know, uh, we as African people, we must not, you understand, stand in solidarity with the struggle that we have going on here. But I want to say something again. I want, I want, I want people to be very careful when they're speaking about reparation and using the word black and using the word African. You understand? Because there are people who, who, who say they're not black what if I say reparation? And here's the word black mm -hmm. people reparation. Uh, all right, well, we have a break coming up, but we'll be right back. Stay with us. Sorry about that.
FM, you can win weekly fabulous prizes. Text to win using your B Mobile or Digicel handset. Text your name to 9191, which allows you to win. One winner will be selected every Friday at 5 p.m. Listen, text, and win. You can also view live streams on Facebook at the Street 919 FM and YouTube at the Street 919 FM. Text to win on the Street 919 FM. Get mom in the right frame of mind this Mother's Day and see mom smile. Value Optical has a momtastic Mother's Day sale with 40% off all tagged frames and 25% off all other frames. Visit any of our 13 locations and find frames for the entire family. Promotion ends May 9th and conditions apply. Value Optical, caring for your eyes. National Congress of Incorporated Spiritual Baptist Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. Liberation 2021 continues to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the repeal of the Draconian Prohibition Ordinance of 1970, which is fulfilling our spiritual liberation. We carry out liberation observances on the Iowa stage at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, the 28th of April, 2021, with a spiritual metaphysics in under the service mission of Lord Bishop Bonhoeffer. Together with His Eminence, Patriarch Dr. Stephen F. Julian, His Grace as Bishop Patrick Brown, and King Shepherd Ray M. S. Prophet. See you there, Jesus loves. that cater to all your health needs. The male enhancement package targets the areas of the body that contribute to erectile dysfunction. The male enhancements cost $1,400. The gap pills are priced at 250 pills for $500 and 500 pills for just $900. For the best in eye care, get the super combination of a super bright and the body healer. To improve the heart's function and circulation, get the gap pills 
and Formula C. To get a total body cleanse daily, use the Gap Body Healer and Big C, all for a super low price of $1,300. To order your products from the Gap Man Limited, call 628-4531 for products that cater to all your health needs. For more info, contact 476-7268. Issue Kikaro, I am allowed to be share if I share Gan King, better known as MC Du. And every Monday between the hours of 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., I host a show called Orisha, the way of life, right here on the Shit 919 FM, where I have guests passing through from the Orisha Ifa Baptist diaspora to educate, edify, and inform you, the listening public, about Orisha Ifa practices. So remember to tune in every Monday between the hours of 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for Orisha, the way of life. Yo, 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 this is a big mic, not the mass man, the health man. Are you one of the 40 million people suffering with joint issues like rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis? Well, you are listening to the right hand. You have the ailment, we have the remedy. Call us now on 288-8301 or 346-2612. Don't forget to tune in right here on the street, 919 FM, every Wednesday from 10 to 5 a.m. Performance, we don't talk. <laughs> Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. Get up, black man, stand up, black man, you better listen. So there's a need for brotherhood. Black man, get up, black man, stand up, black man, you better listen. Black man, get up, black man, stand up, black man, you better listen. Brotherhood is demanded. Black man, get up. Black man, stand up. Black man, you better listen. Brotherhood is required. Brotherhood is demanded. Brotherhood is obligatory. Brotherhood is essential. It is urgent and it is compulsory. Whenever the dominant white society fears for its economic future, racial tensions are always aggravated. The aim of Almighty God is to bring the black man and woman together. The aim of Almighty God is that we, no matter how divided we have been in the past, must experience unity in order to gain the success that we seek and the progress that we desire. There is no way that a divided people can build a future. Brotherhood is demanded. So there's a need for brotherhood. Welcome back and welcome to the second hour of the Black Agenda here on the Street 919 FM. I am David Muhammad. We're going up to 6 o'clock and we're taking your calls. I want to take your calls for this entire hour, inshallah. 3420081 and 4665391. Remember, uh, press conference Wednesday morning, 11 o'clock, live on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Project.
Okay, and of course we're announcing the launch of the book Black Youth at Risk from Juvenile Delinquency to Criminal Gang Activity which is on Saturday at the Kwame Ture Center from 2 p.m., which is during the African Expo. So African Expo number seven is taking place all day next week, Saturday, May the 1st. But the book launch is in the conference room from 2 p.m. And for the press conference on Wednesday morning, 11 o'clock, we have an announcement to make. All right, Cole, are you there? Yes, Mr. Mohammed. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Dr. Mohammed, a pleasant good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome. I, I, my, 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 my belly trembling. I know that's what I say. God, oh, Father, help me to get you to Mr. David. Help me to get <laughs> you. And I thank God. And I try hard not to be long. And Mr. David, just go with me. I'm an avid listener of your program. Uh -huh. But I, I don't call as much, but I always try my best to tune in. Right? right, and I don't want to show up your program this afternoon. I remember calling you a couple of months ago with my daughter mm -hmm. concerning hotel school. I need to give my WhatsApp number, but I didn't call. And we are talking about Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and I wanted to this afternoon my mm -hmm. daughter, as a as a as a, a black girl, a black mother, her life matter. Mr. David, I I don't know what they have a rebate for these people. They told them to to sign up on it and on the internet since last year they say received and we are almost in the fifth month of the year and she hasn't gotten back a cent what, what kind of rebate for what is this for the hotel school remember oh last yes she passed she just about to do about two subjects right this is, not, this is not government fashion just with me because i had a nephew went there i remember speaking to you and he was a recipient of gate mr muhammad and you know banks don't show no mercy Every month, I am still committed to pay that financial mm -hmm. institution I borrowed the money from to pay back for my daughter. And thank God, I've never de defaulted. I've never come short. But they have a rebate for the young people. And I don't know why in God's name, I'm sure I'll call on one or two other stations to spread out the message. And I don't know why in God's name they are not calling these young people to give them a rebate. Mr. David, tell me as if here. I, as a black poor lady from a mover here, I fight hard to educate my child to give us, to make us, to see how rich where I didn't reach as a black yes. woman, right? And I took out the, the loan, Mr. Mohammed, is over two going on three years now, right? So, okay, nobody planned for COVID. The world didn't plan for COVID. Mm -hmm. School had was to close down. They couldn't come there because, you know, they had to go in the lab and cook. So they wasn't able to cover a certain thing. So that's why they tell them they will give them a rebate for that. Mr. Mama, tell me, is this there any sight of God? That you all, everybody just gone into hiding, right? Mm -hmm. Had some kind of so-called meeting with the young people online, some tongue meeting, and, and tell them, okay, we'll be sending out all your credit and all your free to go to UE or wherever. Where am I getting more money from? My child just have two courses to do over and mm -hmm. the only place that have those two courses is Tobago. Mr. Mohammed, I cannot go and borrow no more money to send my child to be able to do no two courses and that is if she's able to do it physically right and i think it is here in the sight of god mr david just bear with me because we are talking about yeah, righteousness we are talking about justice here right and it is easy to, to, to know you went to the bank borrow all this money you had to come up with titi went to buy the books they don't want your tt money and was the one line up in that that bank that i bought the money from to get the u.s from that much trouble Start to let them know this is where I come and take my daughter education alone, and I want to get you. And Mr. David Mohammed, it is the certificate my daughter has mixology communication. She has a five parties, she has she went CCC, and she was one out of three that they recommend to go to school. They awarded her scholarship because of her mannerism and deportment. You know, Mr. David Mohammed, it's an easy for me, you know. I just had to pray every day. And say, God, Father, keep my mind, keep me strong. Because I'm paying back this loan. The school come and close down. Everybody disappear and go on quiet. They have a rebate not only for my daughter, as I said, but for the other balance of the young people. Where yeah, are they? Why are they saying, okay, by such and such time, we will, you know, 
that whatever is the rebate, I could go to this institution and pay up, you know, some months in advance, whether three months, two months, and help me cut down on my loan. But everybody disappear, Mr. Mohammed, and just send your credit to you, and you're free to take the damn credit and go to wherever school to be go you be. I don't have no more money, Mr. Mohammed, mm. because I, I don't have, I cannot go and borrow no more money. And I just, Mr. David Mohammed, sometimes I don't know what to say. I say, God, Father, this world, this place, not easy when he's a poor person. And I close with this, Mr. Mohammed. I said, let me contact a lawyer. And he telling me I have to pay this money just to get consultation to see if I have a case. Nobody don't want to help you. Just say, okay, ma, mother, you put out all this money. Let me see if I can do a little charity here and help you to see not only your daughter, but all the rest of young people from Cuba all about who was in hotel school, who had come to the end of their tenure. Let me see if we can fight and have a case for you. Everything we can do a little charity, but see, and fight in case for you. Because they have a rebate for them. She filled out the form on 19th last October, September, and up to now, not a word. Only God alone of a part of the country of the globe these men are who was walking the halls in TTHTI Institute in the jacket and tie and whoever. Everybody just disappeared. Because this mommy that has hurt me. I grew up in the bowels of Lavantel and I know where I come from. And I say, God, I want to make happen for my child what was not made happen for me. And I suffered soul and I'm still suffering soul to pain back in soul. And these people just disappeared. Mr. David Mohammed, I don't know. Let, 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 me, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Um, how much are they charging you for that consultation? They charge me about almost seven, eight hundred dollars, and it's a reputable lawyer. Okay. Um, we might might be able to help with that, with um, getting a consultation. Okay. okay. So, yeah. um, yeah, we, we, we might be able to handle that part of it. So what I suggest is you can come through to our office. Um, on the back road right here next to the composite school? Yes, yeah. Well, I'd have passed right here on my way home to move on, yeah. I'm thinking uh, it would be good if you could come on Saturday. Or Friday afternoon at 2? Well, I work on Friday whole day, but Saturday evening I'm going in. But you, you, you have a number to contact me, right? No, I didn't keep your WhatsApp number. To okay, well, you use use the 3320214 number, but you'll have to message it. Not All right, 332-0214. No, 332 Uh-huh. Zero two one four. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, and we we could um, we, it's, like I said, it's possible. I'll have to have a brief conversation first, but um. Yeah, fair enough. And I'm not looking for like hand. At, at, I I I I must have given on it. The God of the universe and God of justice and righteousness, and they know down there was not pretty penny. Yeah, I, I I understand. And this is Ministry of Education, right? Well, more or less, I believe more or less. Yeah, okay. more or less. Nothing to do with tourism or. Well, it's the Trinidad and Tobago um, hospital. Um, right. Yes, I I know, yeah, but I'm 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 trying to think of which ministry they'll fall under. I know the um, government really really pumps some money there. Yeah, I believe it's the people who run the school. Mm. We're running down to the ground. Because as I said, my nephew was a student there and he was a recipient of gate. But time my daughter went in gate had stopped. Yeah. So like there was no proper accountability in that school. Yeah. All right. So, so it you know. Yeah. I yeah. understand. All right, so let's talk this week, all right? All right then. Okay. okay. Inshallah. All right. Yeah. Cola, are you there? Let me say good afternoon to you. Yes, good afternoon, good sir. Wow. And on the say that is the reason why she wouldn't get it done. Because she didn't want to cry it's political. And she didn't want to blame the people them who is to be blamed. So that's why she will she will get it done. Because I've been an issue on power on the two complaining and and I will say this. She will not get it done because she didn't want to blame political and it, it is political. She wanted to blame the school alone and she don't want to blame the politician because I, I well, well, let, well let's let's not blame her. 
Let's not blame her. Let's no, not no, make I, her I, I the object of I this. I am the end with her contribution. She did she on the contribution. She she ain't want to blame with the person and them who, who to blame. She wanna blame the school. But it's not the school alone to blame. You have to blame P and M. P and M. You have to blame. Blah Mohammed. Yes. It's sad to see. Right? I listened to the program yesterday yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. And one of your callers is a known caller, Mr. Paul of Spain. And he gone on again. Uh, all right, but, 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 um, but wait, let, let me let me just let, let me let me just um. Could we? Could we make our points with as little reference as possible to other callers, because it tends to set something in yeah, but, motion. Yeah, it, but, it tends but to set a domino effect of responses. You, you always telling you that you always telling you that how I call him to come by your. Workplace, and I never come. I have to clear up that. You always telling me you do that, and keep on saying, saying yes. I have to clear up that. Okay, well, addre- address and that, and then let's and then let's move on. So address that. Right. Yeah. Okay. But Mohammed, as yeah. as you might know, I don't know if you know that same individual. Me and that same individual is very close. That is individual. Individual. I could call him a fan, a friend, a family, a supporter. I do not know where he was, but 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 we was close. But that's good. And that individual used to call me and say things like, well done. And he used to tell me what to say. Remember you say how I call him for, for some, uh, my cousin, for some panting too, right? But I ain't going there. When, when I call the, the, that same individual, and God hear me out here, God, you should strike me down and tell me here if I say anything ab- 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 bad about that elderly person. But Mohammed, I never say it, but I will say it here now. When I call this individual, is the most of the 30th, I have... Okay, but wait, you're supposed to be addressing what he said I had, particularly. I had, I had just met... Okay. I, I did not get to say any word. This man, I say hello. The man started to cuss me and hang up his phone. I didn't get to say anything. Um, but I'm all, I mean, it's sad. But as I just say, you're trying because yesterday, for a take 15 minutes to blame Kamala. Then, but I come and take 25 minutes to blame Kamala. But I didn't you know, you want to stop me and question me, but I know I don't appear them, so they, they can do that. I'm a UN I'm very proud. But the, the point is, these individuals, I don't like none of them because they, because they don't like me. They, you, you see that police, right, went up in Lavender, picked on, and go in a private house I'm telling you, the man put on in his right. mask. On his private property. On his private property. Yeah. Right? And there was a wedding take place some weeks ago on that same private property. Hmm. Next, to the pol- next to the police commissioner house, next to the center police station. Nobody never went in there yeah. to tell them, please, do a mask. Oh, is this? Right. What, what kind of country we live in? Right. And that is something that needs to be given much more attention than it received. I haven't seen the news for the weekend, but I'm hoping it's featured on no, the news it, this evening. It, it, it will not feature the news. Well, because it, needs it happened to, be. to a poor black African boy, right? And Brother Mohammed, you know what to me the most, right? To see that Franklin Khan daughter get a free pass to bring in her friends and family with her. This is something we have to be concerned because Many loved ones in this country couldn't come in here to see their loved ones bury. And how fucking can the daughter could get the exemption to bring in friends and family the same way? When we ask the question up to now, Dr. Lee never answer if his daughter comes eight and that people when she come come to visit for 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 um Christmas. But I'm it, we we advise that Fucking Khan the daughter is not a she living over abroad, she work over abroad, right? There's people who live in here, who work in here, who pay in bills and tax in this country. Here. And by the moment, they cannot come back. They cannot come back. So how, 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 how that could be fair? How, 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 how we allow something can and the of God? There's people doing the same thing. Charity, people paying back tax, they serve in the country. 
and the Kenneth Communist country, how could I sit down and see mothers, see fathers, see uncles, see sisters crying and asking to come home? And we are lost and in can, daughter, uh, to bring in friends and family. They come to the airport, they jump in the vehicle, they got she away, she go on in the house, in the private house with someone pool, big cat, eat and drink, and she stay 14 years day. Then she will take place. Wait a moment before I go. Wait a moment, I decided to call your program late, as I told you. But there's a metal they come up with now. Call in and jam the line. So things when you get a chance to call in. Because yesterday, Grandma Mamma, call where them two individuals take you down because they said, I almost have call in. Oh gosh, Grandma Mohammed, every time um, he call in, he go into politics. Yesterday, there was politics from the beginning. And that same lady calling, that same lady calling, and have nothing to say. Brother Mohammed, I am dealing with deceitful people. We are dealing with deceitful people. Brother Mohammed, know your friends. Know who for you. Not everything will look black is black enough. Not everything will look black is black enough. I thank you very much. Look at, look at what's there. Look how much of them now. Oh God, I tried to call in so long. I mean, oh my gosh. Jesus All right, thank you. Thank you. What, what, what is it about our society? Is it our society? What is it? Okay, so I think I um making a decision here to but I won't comment on what I listen to during the day I listen to a lot of different things during the day and I try to absorb in as much from across the country from in the community and from around the globe and I am of the view that in this society and in particular on this radio station there is a very, very high concentration of the discussion on... There are four things you hear very frequently. You hear Rowley, Kamla, PNM, UNC. Repetitively. Now, this program, most times doesn't discuss those things and those four entities Rowley, Kamla, PNM, UNC are almost almost completely inconsequential to our topic today and to the progress of our movement, our aims, goals, objectives. So, if you have something to say, fine. I mean, I've always been very open, very flexible. But if we can do a whole hour, because for the whole first hour, you know, we dealt with this topic. And then we start to vent out of those same themes. You know, I think it is, we're coming to a point where it's worthy to do our best to minimize, minimize the repetitive discussion on those things. I mean, there's, there's only so many times that we can say, Dr. Raleigh is this, Kamala is that. There's only so many times we can say PNM is this, UNC is that. And if we have something new to say that we haven't said a hundred times before, fine. Okay. But I think there are enough other programs to address those themes. All right. 
All right, let's go back to the phone lines, 3420-8146653391. Good afternoon, call. So so I think hello, we're hello, square hello. now. I think we're square now. I think we've balanced it off. So one person said, gave his view, another person responded. Um, so I think we're level. We're even now. We're equal. So we're wiping the slate clean. Yes, good afternoon, caller. Good afternoon, brother, man. How you doing? Yeah, man. Yeah, we can smile. Because I think people know that too, you know. There's a more in-depth discussion you just get in, in terms of that. Not that politics is shallow, but it's about time and place for everything. Um, guys, why I just talk about the things I just talk about, brother David. In terms of, you know, humanity, black people will be going through, and stuff like that. Because yeah, there are deeper questions and deeper answers. You know, I, I was talking to a gentleman, excuse, <coughs> excuse me, um, he, he heavy into the, um, you know, ancient Africanism and stuff like that, uh, you know? And um, we, we discuss a lot of things. So, one of the things he was telling me is that um, within the black person, there are elements that are not present in other races. And you were telling me about the inventor. And I was totally amazed because we share a lot of... You can imagine how the discussions just go, brother David, when I meet up somebody like that. Because very rare you'll meet somebody who will discuss things on... Well, the things I just mentioned. We were saying there was an inventor that invented a whole heap of stuff now. And what you were saying is that you were so in tune with his consciousness and with the... The elements of being black, which, you know, in cosmic history, they say how, they say how black people close to, well, we say God, right? But another term for God is source. Due to how we, due to the makeup, the physiology of the black person, they close to source. And what he was telling me is that the, the, the great, the inventor, I, I, I forgot to ask him his name. You, you probably might know him too. He said the reason why he could invent so much of things is because he used to perceive the frequencies and the, 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 the aura and the resonance and the harmonics of... He, he had a perception that he could see these things and that is how he was able to, um, to manipulate and invent so much of wondrous things. Plenty of things he invented. So what I'm saying is that I just try to get to the bottom of the heat for... African people or black people, you know? I, I, I just try to get to the bottom of it. And, you know, I guess I'm answer and it real deep. Maybe I, I, I are little pieces here and there because, you know, sometimes it may seem very far-fetched. And the whole idea is to, because we're so close to the understanding of the energy of God, it is imperative to the regressives that control in the earth, all of them, to the regressives that deal with racism and hatred, it is imperative that we do not discover this 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 potential that we have. Because we will teach others to discover that same potential that they have also. So, you know, that's, that's where I just get at, because sometimes most of the things they speak about like you were speaking about Jesse Owens, I remember one scene a documentary on Jesse Owens when I was small, and I was absolutely blown. When I say inspired and blown away, brother, yeah. David, inspired. Uh, they, 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 they run the man against a horse, brother David. Mm -hmm. Do you, you remember that? Do you, you remember they put him up against a horse? You can't remember that? Well, I remember seeing that on a documentary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, due to that, this kind of ability that we have, I just say that is why they they so there's such a um um a effort to oppress and suppress the elevation of the consciousness mm. of the black person and you know it's it's all mind control every the world is if you could only get below the code or understand how mind control is done and how it is how it is sustained and the fact that um the things that affect us humans is literally a non-human thing, I think we'll, we'll make some progress. Have a nice evening, brother. Thank time. you. Thank you, my brother. Caller, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, how are you doing? 
I am good. Give thanks. Great. I see you went from one extreme to the next. <laughs> well. And I must say you stole my contribution because, I mean, you would always say it better than I would. But it's the same sentiments I have. Mm -hmm. This is not the program for that kind of a thing, for crying out loud. There are so many other stations that condone and, and, and feed on that kind of a thing. Don't come here with that. Look, go to your community, open a book club. Come to this station, to this, this program and report, listen, I got one child reading and watch it grow. You don't have to worry about where you're going to get books. Brother David here has written many books. Start a book club for crying out loud. Start something in your community and you come here and you report it. Instead of just coming here to make your quota of Kamla Bistad, Bistad, and nonsense all over all the right. well, well, let's, well, let's, 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 let's not take it even further down that all road. All right, that's true. Because we don't provoke another response. Yes, and yes, it is on both. To me, the way I see it, the it's almost an equal balance of the same mm -hmm. political bantering back and forth. No, but I, I think that last caller, there, I think he has an edge on everybody. All right, well, let's let's like well, let's yeah, let, let's yeah. stop making it a topic. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But the thing about it is, I would say to racism is is really something very sick. It is a disease. Because here it is, this man won a medal for his country. And only because he supported, just supported, and he was ostracized. So you see the depth of what racism can do, how evil this thing is? Yeah. And, and some, sometimes it's only until the generations after. Yes. So, like, after their generation is is dead and gone, like the that's what happened with the Australian athlete who came yes. second, and even with um with Collette in 1972 for the two men who gave. It's also referred to as a Black Power salute that they refused yes. to acknowledge the American national anthem. At the yes. time, they were banned and they were ostracized and they were sent home. But now, I mean, they that's were they were right. inducted into the the Black Olympians right. Hall of Fame. Yes. That is the thing that happened with things like these, eh? It happens all the time. Same and, thing with and Colin Kaepernick. You Kaep know. I'm just about to mention Kaepernick. The same is going to happen to him. He's going to rise to greatness in time to come. He paid a price now because of once like, he too was ostracized and everything. But he is going to rise to greatness. Yeah. His, he is going to live on in history. But it was so very nice that those two guys was his um, bearers and at his as his as his funeral. Yes, yes, yeah. My goodness, yeah. that is why you still have to say in this world there is still a lot of love. Eh? Hmm. There is, lo there is love. Mm. There is love. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Always Most good welcome. to hear you. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, it's uh, 5.33. We're taking your calls. Call, are you there? Yes, David. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, the division that is in the African community, as I share, Brother David, it's deep, it's wide, it's large, and it's long. You see, just as how we have, um, let me say, congratulations to bring down another black man if you was ashamed, you know. Mm. You calculate yourself in, into, into demeaning or belittling another black person. You don't find it nowhere, nowhere else but in the African community. And we must stop it at some time. It must stop if you was ashamed, you know, Because it just cannot go on. We cannot go on for that long again, Brother David. Education is the key. And who don't want to who? to get true education, that is the business. They will always continue to to fight against the truth while, while in in compromising with the truth to go to further what we know as history. Not what they give us again. Because what you what you say about these black athletes, 
the reason why they, they um, have this rule 50 mm -hmm. is just just for that the only people who will be who will be um protesting or, or showing uh, um compromise towards what is going on with the black lives matter is the black man the favors are showing you yeah. because he the black man ain't making rules for himself or no all the rules I, i've been watching it for a very very long time but it is all the rules that they make is against the black man black man mustn't prosper you know hmm. a black man must not must be like always a slave you, 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 are, you are a slave and, you, and we wash at you as a slave as a slave as a slave until you die as a slave and they they fail to realize that right now is an upward movement in the black community be it in Trinidad and Tobago, in Africa, in America. Yes, why, why I think they're stopping, they don't stop the, the black man driving a, a BMW, a, a Honda, you know, one of these luxury end vehicles where, where they think then we shouldn't be driving. That is not for we. A house is not for we. Land is not for we. These things come to pass that we own in these things now and it is certainly hard to see that we who come out of slavery is uplifting ourselves to a position that they envy right now. And as you say, the more we, we um, get our knowledge about our history, the more they, they will be against us. Thank you very much, Brother David. Thank you. Three four two zero zero eight one and four six six five three nine one. Good afternoon, caller. Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Mohammed. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? Great, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, my my contribution is, is on how you started the program with sports, sports, and and I should say blackness. Yeah. Because right here, right here, just a couple of years. Remember Tamer? Of course. Okay, good. Right? You see what was netted out? Where, where was the Olympic body? Where, you know, mm -hmm. where was it? Where As was a matter it? of fact, it was the, um, the not, not the Olympic committee, but the committee for her particular sport that mm -hmm. seemed to be the ones who, who were against her. Okay, you know? right. And that, mm -hmm. that was so, it was so typical. It was so yeah. typical of our right. society. And, and the, reason, the, the reasoning to, you know, why she didn't qualify, you understand? Right? Because it had a parallel. Just what they say she did, the, the, the person who they, they sent up, right? She had done even worse, you know? And she, she wasn't in the, in the in the grouping, you know? With Tema and, and our government went with that, although, right, it's our taxpayer money, you understand, that was paying for that. We mm -hmm. we knew Tema right through. We knew her, you know, traveling and, and carrying the country through, right? Before that, I didn't, I never heard of that young lady. I can't remember her name now. Dick. You know. Right, good. Right, before that. You know, and 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 the whole of the, the West, you could say, came out to support that young lady, <laughs> right? Which which to me was the worst thing of all, right? They came out the the gymnastic thing in in this country and all, you know, right? They came out, and then they said to make it even worse. This girl lost that opportunity. You were shamed. You understand? Because I will say you were shamed because when you feel you're going to do something and 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 the system down you, you understand? That come like a shame, right? That that come like you're keeping you in, a, in your in your place then. So if somebody else, a, a, another youth want to aspire that, they will say, boy, where the youth boy? You, you understand, Brother David? Yep. Right? And then when she threw them, right, she had to settle for a, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. If it was somebody else, Dr. Mohammed, they would have been getting millions of dollars because that could have been the girl's last chance, you understand, to make history 
being the first person from our country going to the the Olympic in in in, the, in that um sport, right? So we have it right here in we face, right? So that's just my contribution. Okay, you have a good evening. Yeah, thank you so much. Always good to hear from you. Okay, yeah. you're nice. Caller, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Brother David. How are you doing? I okay, thank you. Great. I have a little bit of graphic to describe to you. This, this racism thing is, is like a huge dragon, mm. you know, waving tail and stewing fire in protest of anything that has to do with African, African people getting justice and equal rights. You know, it's like I tell you sometime last week, you know, the harder we fight and the louder we, we fall, like they're showing us that that still uh, will help me too much. You know, it's just as though we had to go some steps further than that. But by the grace of God, as I always tell you, you know, we had the battering ram there. You know, it's one pong at a time and one day we must we must break that barrier. You know what I'm saying, Brother David? Yes, sir. One day we must make a breakthrough, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it very much. I'm very, very thankful for the kind of information that you're sharing, you know, to keep me right on top of where I'm supposed to be. I'm not waver. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Brother David. Well, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And let me take the opportunity to bring us back into perspective. We started off today talking about an announcement that has been made by the International Olympic Committee that they intend to uphold what is called Rule 50, where athletes are banned from making what they refer to as political statements or statements raising awareness on racial and social justice and there are now reactions from a number of quads and let me salute let me salute our brother president of the trinidad and tobago olympic committee brian lewis who was interviewed on this and he said nope he disagrees with the move that athletes especially in this time of black lives matter should be given the opportunity to express themselves as they see fit because the Olympics are about them. So, um, salute to you, Brother Brian Lewis, a Trin and Tobago Olympic Committee President. Call it good afternoon. Good afternoon, David Mohammed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I joined your program about a half an hour ago. Oh. I was getting problems to get it on Facebook and I wasn't getting it at all. I could put on my cell phone to hear you. And that's when I got that part. I tuned in when I think Kingsley was making his last contribution in the final part. And then I heard what you said after. Right, good. But, yes, but, but Brother David, you are the horse. You are the one to dictate what should be said. Most stations, they have a topic, and a lot of the callers who call here, when they have a topic, you can't come and, if you're talking about Brian Williams or, or the, the Olympic Committee, Brian you Lewis. can't come and talk nothing about Kamala and... and, and oh, all right, um, so yeah, so we, we've, made, we've made the point and, and we've moved on from it. Yeah. Yes, and I am saying, oh gosh, there are so many other things to talk about that others get to discuss with the and the PNM and the lady made her contribution, whatever, and it it, it boiled down to you know, and she I want to say, and this is the thing. Kingsley called. All right, but wait, uh, wait, but wait, one, one second. We've made the point and we moved on from it. It's, yes, it's well, not I necessary. Yes, I'm saying to you. It's that not, is why I yeah. called. I'm saying to you, you are the host of the program right. and you used to dictate. Well, appreciate that's it. That's all, and I'm moving on. Right, Great. brother David. I um, 
No, you're talking that. That's why when I call, I ask, what is it? Because I told you, I to tune in late. So yeah. you are you can speak about anything, right? I mean, besides, I ain't talking nothing politics. Well, well look, uh, my, I, my, my policy has always been that mm -hmm. we can always talk. I mean, this, this evening in particular, we're looking at a new... Uh, an announcement that was made by the Olympic Committee that for the Olympics mm. coming up, that athletes mm -hmm. will be banned from making statements promoting racial justice or highlighting mm -hmm. racism and other social causes. And mm -hmm. it has come across as being somewhat suspect, especially at a time like this, especially as so many athletes are expected to make um, such statements. And we've had mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali in the past we've had jack mm -hmm. johnson we've had the right. the um the olympics um the american black american medalists tommy smith and john carlos mm -hmm. in 1968 with the black prophets we've had so many of them like maybe oh. once every five, five or years. so years you've had a oh, major so. one but within the so last that was your topic um right gen beginning. generally but but the thing oh, is within okay. the last year in particular from mm -hmm. colin kaepernick to now, there has been an acceleration in the rate of statements calling for black unity against racism, um, mm -hmm. calling for, you know, sensitivity training and critical mm -hmm. race theory, etc. And then for this ban to come up by the Olympic Committee at a time like this, you mm -hmm. know, um, is, is very such sad. That. That is very sad because... And our, our own local you. Olympic Committee has spoken mm -hmm. out against it. Oh, Brian, yes. Brian Lewis. I mean, I, ag I agree with him, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, the, um, Brother David, I'm sure you could remember when Dwight York was playing for, was it Ashton Villa? Yeah, Ast and Aston Villa. when uh, one of the fans was making racial slurs in the stand, you know, yeah. And and it is so sad, and and every time it comes back to me, you, see, you, you know, when I saw that soldier, how he was treated by the police out there in the United oh, States, I yeah. said, Lord, that is why Muhammad Ali said he was not going into the army, mm -hmm. and I agree. You go, you know, I just always say, America, if it's one time, they doesn't care if you're black. If you is Muslim, you could be from Afghanistan. They could be from wherever country. Them having a problem with, you know, when it's Olympics, they take you. They could make you a citizen. You know why? They want to get those goals. That is one <laughs> time they doesn't care about. Let, let, let me ask you this: do, do you remember the name Ben mm -hmm. Johnson? Yes. Right. The, uh, the, the guy who was running for, I think it was in Canada. Yes. Uh, so so they, right? made, they made the joke. I, I remember mm -hmm. I was in England at the time. And they mm -hmm. said, um, on that week, when Ben Johnson won the gold medal, yeah. he was Canadian. Mm -hmm. When he was called up for being under suspicion for the drug, um, for taking the drug, he was yeah. Jamaican. He suddenly wasn't right. Canadian. And then yes, by the by the by the end of the week, by the mm -hmm. end of the week, when they found that he did have the substance in his blood, he was African. Oh, <laughs> I mean, this, but that is what I'm telling you. When you can bring gold for them, they doesn't care what country you're from. Like he was he wasn't but Canadian so, anymore. Yes, he suddenly identified with Jamaica. Ah, no, they boy, identified boy, him boy. with Jamaica. Mm, it's it's so so because he was ridiculous. born in Jamaica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's it. They will they will give it to you just because they feel you can bring gold for their country. Mm -hmm. But they don't really care, really. Brother David, you have a good. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. And with World Cup football being next year, you're also going to see some very interesting stories regarding the allegiances of certain athletes. Because remember. A lot of footballers have dual citizenship, dual nationality. And, I mean, the, the, the biggest issue every year is Jamaica. Because you have so many top-level black footballers in England, including Raheem Sterling, who are eligible to play for Jamaica. As a matter of fact, from what I understand, Raheem Sterling was born in Jamaica. And he is probably the best player on England's national team. Um, 
so the whole question of allegiances and nationalities um, come up. It was the same with Shaka Hislop. Shaka Hislop has dual citizenship, but he was he could have played for England, came and played for Trinidad. There was one Bobby Zamora as well. Um, so Jamaica have more of that issue than we do, but you'll start to hear all those stories. Um, as a matter of fact, there were two World Cups ago. There were five. Um, so there were five teams in the World Cup. Five teams in the World Cup that had players that were born in Brazil. Imagine that. And Japan was one of them. You had Japan, Costa Rica, Portugal, um, and one or two other teams. All right, Cole, are you there? Yes, Mr. Mohamed. Yes. Sorry, I'm still. I called to apologize because God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. And if I did show up, and I don't want to be able to where I have showed up your program. Oh, and come on. No, no, no. Not at all. Not please. I come on. Because I know you're a man. You're no, no, no! Don't, don't even. No, no, no! Don't, don't. Not, not at all. And excel, you know. So no. I learn a lot from you. I highly respect you. I respect the prime minister. I respect the opposition leader because my Bible says we respect those in authority that we may lead a peaceable life and all honesty and godliness. It just hurt. Oh God! I don't want to drop your program again, sis. <laughs> it just hurt as a mother to know you're trying. I know. I know. I know. Yes, Mr. David. I look right now over land, slide in the back of my house over here and a half. Oh, and I can't do anything. And I had was to leave that to educate my, my daughter, right? So hmm. I, I have never called and attacked nobody when they come and... It, it, just, it hurt me. And I said... Yeah, you, ma'am, you sound like a lady with class. You sound like a lady with I'm class, sure a thoughtful person. God, in my humanity and my frailness and to err is divine to err is human but to forgive is divine yeah you know but i am trying as i said i put my house on pause to educate my little darky and i don't want to attack him because i ain't going down with because i fall to apologize i said i'm praying i pray i said god i hope i wasn't i ain't cause no confusion no not at, at all not at all not but at that all. is not my motive at all i understand i respect all those in authority yeah. Right, and let God do what He has to do. I cannot take the place of God. Right, so Mr. David, I just had to call and say. I understand. And thank you, and God bless you and your family and your ministry and all that you're doing for the young people in Love until with your with your school and your ed just for their total development. God bless you so much, Mr. Mohammed. Thanks. Thank you. Cola, are you there? Good afternoon, Brother David. Good afternoon to you. I just call to say hello to you. you know uh, of course, I know who it is. <laughs> How Gemma, you doing? Gemma. Yes, of course, <laughs> DJ Gemma. <laughs> Always. Well, I see, like the program finish. Um, we actually have exactly fifty-five seconds. Right, right. Okay, I just call to say hello. Yeah. And all God's blessing on your future. Well, I appreciate yes. that. Hope to see yes. you on Saturday and, coming. Yes. Yes, yes, and well, if I don't come, but I know I'll organize to get the book. Yes, yes, okay? lovely, lovely. Thank you, yes. thank you so much, right. DJ Jemma. Okay, All okay. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. Always nice to hear from Gemma and everyone else, of course. But this is where I leave it for this afternoon. I'll be back on, on Saturday. So, Catch me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Black Agenda Project. Wednesday morning, 11 o'clock. We have the press conference and we have an announcement to make. So, next week, Saturday, also African Expo, number seven, and the launch of the book, Black Youth at Risk from Juvenile Delinquency to Criminal Gang Activity. May Allah continue to bless you. Ramadan Mubarak.